In this box, I have the cheapest gaming system that I could find on Amazon, and those have a tendency to be quite wild. So buckle up, because this is going to be one hell of a ride. But before that, it's time for today's video sponsor, Linode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is a powerful and easy to use Linux based web hosting service that's currently the top rated infrastructure as service provider on G2. Very impressive. Linode also has an extensive marketplace of fully configured one click apps for whatever use case you need Linux based web servers for. Be it WordPress development, file hosting, database management, video hosting, or even games servers, Linode has you covered. Other than that, if you have a heavy computational load, Linode is an affordable and easily scalable option. Linode is also in the process of implementing Google Pay, which will make your monthly payments more seamless. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a $100 60 day credit. Okay, well, aside from the at least they tried bits of packing foam, this system is actually very well packaged. Good job, Mr. Random Amazon seller. And then we also have a note bribing us for an Amazon review, but you know, fair enough, it's difficult to get people to review stuff. And then we have a just basic instruction on how to set up the PC, which is always nice to see. And then here we have some accessories with a power cable. And then we also get some e-waste peripherals. I haven't seen those in a while. And these are actually gaming branded. Ooh, wow, that is actually not the worst keyboard I've seen. It even comes with a braided cable. That is, that is surprisingly promising. However, the mouse is pretty rough. It kind of reminds me of a mouse designed by somebody that just Googled gaming peripheral and hasn't actually ever played a game before. <sighs> Oh, okay. Um, apparently that huge box is a bit of a debate because now we're just left with a little baby box. We've got some dedicated graphics in here. Who wants to take a guess what that graphics card is? <laughs> Unboxing this system really feels like taking apart a set of Russian dolls. Ugh. Okay, now before we have a look at the little bit of PC in there, let's have a closer look at the case because this is a Cooler Master Q300L Mini, I think. Now in the front, we have this magnetized removable dust filter, which we're obviously gonna have to remove the, the plastic around. And then behind that, you have some ventilation. That's, that's exciting. Now the same goes for the top. We also have one of these removable uh, magnetic dust filters. That is a whole bunch of ventilation holes that we have going here. Now in terms of front IO, we have uh, two USB three, a microphone, a headphone jack, and a power button, which is not too bad. Now around the back, things are not looking great. You know you have a dated rear IO when you've got a Mesozoic period port, but at least we have two USB three, so it's, it's not too bad. And then we have the graphics card, which I'm sure nobody's guessed what that is yet. And then finally, we have our power supply hiding in a little hole over there. <laughs> okay, now, before we start making fun of the system, um, I do want to make it clear that whoever the seller was clearly took some time and put effort into cable managing it properly and stuff and i guess it's a valiant effort but this is still hilarious because look at that little cooler <laughs> it looks like a northbridge cooler i've never seen that i mean here is my <laughs> Now, I actually think that the main reason that this system looks so funny to me is because you have this pretty small MATX case and then they put like an ITX motherboard in the small MATX case so then it just looks so tiny. And then on the tiny motherboard, there's this like really tiny little CPU cooler. Like it is, it's just such a ridiculous looking inside of a system. But actually with that, let me walk you through the components because it's actually fascinating. Under that tiny little cooler, we have an old AMD laptop APU. 
It's an FX 9830P, which is a four core, four thread part from about five years ago. And considering that it has a little bit of GPU in it, we're gonna have to compare it to the GT710 to see if we've got a case of gratuitous graphics card. And yes, the system does also have a GT710 in it. But with that, I actually wanna take off that little cooler and have a closer look at the APU. So let's jump into the future after the testing and see what's going on with that FX 9830P. We are now officially in the future. I finished the testing and we can get under that little cooler to see what that APU looks like. I think that it may actually be soldered straight onto the motherboard because I don't think you get socketed versions of these laptop APUs. Uh, but before we can have a look at that, we're gonna have to remove that just majestic little cooler. Oh, okay, those four screws just seem to hold the fan on, but <laughs> whoa, that, that heatsink is just so tiny. Uh, I think we're gonna have to remove it through the back of the case. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. There's nothing quite as inconvenient as through the back CPU mounting. I'm gonna need a smaller head. Just kind of pop that off. Oh, it's so cute! Now the first thing is we have this sheet of thermal paste under here, which kind of makes me think that this cooler was mounted at the factory. And then we have our very kawaii little laptop APU, which I was right, has actually been soldered to the motherboard, which means we're not going to be able to upgrade this, which is not great considering the performance that I just saw. Uh, but with that, let's get back to the past. And then we have my personal favorite pre-built mistake, a single stick of RAM with an AMD-based APU. It's not Ryzen, so maybe it's more lenient to, to memory bandwidth issues. Now, the thing about the ketchup and mustard cables that we have going here is that it actually matches the yellow on the motherboard quite well, so it actually... <laughs> It actually doesn't look that bad, to be honest, considering, you know, the setup. It, it's all kind of themed. We've got a, a ketchup and mustard themed system here. Now, next up, we definitely have to mention the power supply in here, which is actually a 400 watt 80 plus bronze rated unit, but it is a power man, um, which I've not heard of before. Who knows? Every time I've not heard of a power supply manufacturer, someone in the comment section tells me that they're actually really good. So let me know, is power man low key really good? Oh, just look at that. Like I said before, someone clearly put some time and effort into assembling the system properly. And then in terms of storage, they seem to have stolen an SSD out of an HP pre-built. But with that, let's reassemble this lovingly reared little abomination and see if it's been infected with any venereal bloatware. Okay, let's fire up this titan of a gaming system and see what, what happens. No lighting in there. It's the first time in a while I've seen a system that you switch on and just nothing lights up. Would you look at that? This is the third PC in a row that's not had any VD on it, which is kind of mind-blowing. We're going for a kill streak here. That's awesome, and I, I guess that's one of the advantages of uh, kind of random sellers as opposed to larger established companies, is that they don't have any like monetary incentive to have a bunch of crap loaded onto the system, so you just get GeForce experience. Let's see uh, what the single channel RAM situation looks like over here. So we've got performance. Uh, there is our majestic FX 9830P. Uh, with Radeon R7 graphics. We've got 12 compute cores. So this is actually a 12 core gaming system, which is pretty dope. Oof, that single stick of RAM unfortunately isn't running at its rated 3000 megahertz speed, but does it really matter? At this point, the system is essentially just the battle of the bottlenecks. Okay, um, it seems like our five or six year old-ish laptop CPU doesn't actually give us access to its temperature sensor. Uh, we, we can't see how, how hot it's running. So we're going to have to guess how hot it is by how much noise is coming from it. But anyway, let's, let's see what kind of gaming performance we get from this, this cheapo Amazon system. Oh yes, it's been a while since I've seen the majesty that is GT710 Gaming. Um, here we're running at 720p, just all low settings. Wow, this is actually a surprisingly balanced system. Both the CPU and the GPU are pegged at 100%. Wow, that is that's actually amazing. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a beautiful love story, you know. We've got these two. <laughs> 
<laughs> these two components that are so terrible that they just they just work so well together. That's that's amazing. That is that is beautiful to see, quite frankly. <laughs> I'm so happy for the little GT710. Now, un unfortunately, we can't actually see what the temperatures are like on that little FX CPU, but the cooler is actually not making that much noise. It was actually noisier on the desktop, so it, it seems to be okay. Bear in mind, we do have an ambient temperature of 18 degrees Celsius, so it's, it's pretty cool in here. But with that, I'm curious to see what the little iGPU can do in that laptop APU. So let's rip out the GT710 and see if we get a better gaming experience. Things are- oh, oh, many, many things are happening. Okay, um, <laughs> I, was, I was about to say like, yeah, no, I don't think there's much of a difference between the two. And then all of the game disappeared. <laughs> that is how you know that you have some primo gaming hardware, is when GTA 5 just everything just starts disappearing. <laughs> Okay, so apparently we're better off with the GT710 in there. So let's throw it back into the system and try some other games. Next, we have some CSGO action. Here, we're running at 720p low settings. Now, we are playing with bots, which, considering the CPU configuration, is definitely going to be affecting performance here. Now, considering the frame rate, um, it's actually not that bad. Although, if you're going to be playing against other players that have any kind of skill, you're definitely going to have your pushed in. But with that, let's try a game that it can run before having a look at the Fortnite performance. Now here, we're using our game that should run on an Exasketch, Half-Life 2. Now the reason I like to test Half-Life 2 on these bad systems is to show that even if you have the PC equivalent of the latest Star Wars movie, you can still have a good time gaming. And yeah, here we have 1080p medium-ish settings, and we've got a high refresh rate gaming experience going that looks pretty good. So, yeah, there you go. Um, with that, let's move over to Fortnite. Ooh, okay, this is not going great. Here, we have everything on the lowest settings with 1080p, but with a 50% resolution scale. Now, if you want to see what that looks like in person, just set this video to 144p and there you go. Uh, now, now, in terms of frame rate, we're getting in the mid 30s, but the big problem is that there are these occasional huge frame drops, which really make PVP very difficult. I think if you have a system that performs similarly to this, I would definitely recommend using GeForce Now. That'll, that'll offer a much better gaming experience. A lot more than I thought I did, actually. Uh, I, I went back onto Amazon and had a look at the invoice, and apparently I paid 430 US dollars for the system before tax and shipping. You can buy a PS5 for that amount, if you could find one, uh, which really puts the gaming performance into perspective. That being said though, the system definitely found a way into my heart for a couple of reasons. I think the first one is that the seller put a lot of time and effort into building the system properly and sourcing all of the components, uh, which brings me to the second reason, which is these really budget systems from Amazon and eBay are always really interesting. They just throw you curveballs. Uh, with a more expensive system, you can always kind of know what to expect, but with a very cheap system, the sellers have to be really creative about how they meet these price points, and it means you just get these, these fascinating combinations. Which doesn't mean you should buy one of these, you know, it, it, it's like listening to a farmer from Ohio explain to you how he was abducted by aliens and what they did to his butt. The story may be gripping, but that doesn't mean that you should marry them or invest in their business or whatever. It, it's, it's a fascinating system that is not a good purchase. I think in terms of alternative, your best bet would still be the old, old Dell Optiplex route with a mid-range graphics card from several generations back. Actually, let me know in the comment section down below if I should do a follow-up video where I see if the whole Dell Optiplex plus old graphics card route is still viable in 2021. I think that should be a pretty interesting video. So subscribe if you want to see that. Uh, and that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, do consider watching another video. I'll have a tile pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye-bye.